ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Spooky Toberfest Part 2. Now, what you're seeing here is me cutting up some lengths of thin plastic flexible tubing. The reason for this is because if there's one thing I've learnt from watching the great Jojo Man's Let's Build videos, it's that you don't want your pieces to just look like they've been stuck on and that there's no way for them to work. So I'm going to be attaching some pipes and you'll see where in a moment. But you can see here that I'm trying to drill some holes with a pin vise, which is not very successful. So I give up on that and there you can see all the holes are done because I went away to another part of the room and just used a nice handy electric tool instead. So the holes have done very quickly. Now, I'm trying to put this flexible tubing between two of the holes so it looks like there's all kind of weird like power connections between the body and the gun. Like it's half man, half machine, which is kind of what it is anyway. But I'm having some trouble keeping them curved because the way that it's working, they're actually bending in one spot rather than gradually all the way around like I want them to. They're just kind of turning into a V shape when I want them to be nice and rounded. So I gave up on using those and you can see here I'm just delving into my bits drawer over there to see if I can find anything that I could use instead. And what do you know? Some mantic skeleton spears. I've got tons of those left over because I made a lot with the hand weapon option. And those seem to be perfect. And there I am just testing one out there to make sure it fits alright. They're marginally smaller than the holes that I drilled, but that doesn't make much of a difference. I can just fill in what's left later on. And you can see that I'm just putting them in there now. And these bend much nicer than the last material I attempted to use. So this is going to be quite a long process, cutting up these, bending them over my thumbnail, and then trying to fit them in there. It's riveting stuff this, I think you'll agree. And you can get a good idea of how it's going to look now. And let's zoom ahead into the future a bit when I've already done most of them. I was very conscious that it, that it did look kind of stuck onto the front like that. So that's why I'm adding these connections. So it looks like one model rather than just lots of pieces just mashed together. That's a look that is not flattering at all on a model. It looks like I've nearly finished putting those in here. I decided to have a few that run into the gun barrel from the green stuff area as well. It's just one big, horrible, chaotic mess. A mixture of life and technology. And I think you'll agree that it's looking quite delicious. Some of these holes were quite difficult to get the plastic into. Just the way I positioned them, or the angle that I drilled them or something. But they would slip out of my hand every now and then. Oh, it looks like I've finished with that. Yep, so out comes the super glue because they're not at all glued in yet, so I'm just pouring the glue into the holes, which are slightly larger than the spears. So that works out nicely because I can just glue into there. And then I'm going round with a wooden stick, just making sure all the glue's gone down into the hole, clearing up any excess glue. There is quite a lot of excess. I may have gone a bit overboard with the super glue. I do tend to do that now and then, so here's a piece of tissue which I'm using to wipe away any excess. I don't want to ruin any smooth surface that I want to keep at the end. And I'm just checking it out. Oh no, I'm trying to tip out one of the bits of spear actually got stuck inside the model. The hole in the actual defiler body itself, that just goes through into a hollow area, so it just fell in there pretty much. So you can hear it rattling around in there, even now. So there I am just putting another one in that one, making sure that one doesn't fall in as well, and then gluing that one in. 
and then I'm going to go and clean that up, I imagine. Yeah, there we go. I'm sure you're all loving staring directly at my groinal area for all this time. And there's how it looks when all the pipes are in. I think it looks quite handsome. And I was so impressed with that that I decided I'm going to do that on some of the other body parts as well when I come to them. But for now, I'm going to start decorating the gun because I think you'll agree it just looks kind of bland there on its own. So I've got a Chaos Spawn head and a few nice random crabby bits that people sent me. Various people, I'm not sure who sent me these specific parts that I'm going to be using now. I would have to go back and check. But one of them is kind of like almost a hermit crab shell type thing. So I'm going to use that and attach the Chaos Spawn head with the horns to that. So it looks like some kind of crab slug demon thing on top of the gun. I think that's going to look quite tasty. Here I am. I'm using green stuff on most of the connection points on all this stuff, just to give it a bit more strength. Especially since I'm going to be drilling it and all that kind of stuff, I don't want that impact to knock anything off. Especially sticking all these different kinds of plastic together, I'm not sure which one of those is going to react with plastic glue and which aren't. So, I thought it best to be on the safe side and use a bit of green stuff in pretty much everything I'm doing here. And that's going on top of the gun barrel, as you can see there. You'll have some detailed pictures of that at the end, so don't panic. And I'm just smoothing out the green stuff underneath the shell portion of it. Just so it doesn't look just tacked on there. And if anything does just look tacked on at the end, I am going to go around and make an effort to make sure it all looks nice and smooth and part of one model. But that's for later. Now what I'm doing, I had some more green stuff there, and I'm putting some spikes underneath the gun barrel now. I don't just want decoration on top, I want decoration underneath as well. So I've got some of these nice crab-like spikes. I cut a little bit off of them just because they stuck out a bit too far. And I didn't want it to look like the shells from the cannon would actually hit them when they left. That would be a really ineffective weapon, even for chaos, I think. Are you shooting yourself? Yeah, you never know, though. And there's those stuck on there, again, with a bit of green stuff and super glue. And I'm just going in there, smoothing that down now. And I'm liking how this is looking already, but I still think there's a few too much, a few too many spots of bare plastic there on the gun barrel. So, back into the bits box we go. It's my crappy bits section there. I'm looking for little bits of like shell or small parts of carapace that I could use. And there we go, I found some there in that box that I was using for sawing and drilling and whatnot. And the bits box is away, and here we go. So I'm going to put two more little bits of shell behind the spikes just to fill it up a bit more. Because there's one thing that you need to know about chaos. I suppose it applies to some other races as well. But you can't have too much going on. I guess it applies to chaos and orcs, really. By their very nature, you just need to have tons of stuff thrown in there. You don't want too much blank space on a model. Especially something as big as this. It's going to look pretty sweet with all that crazy detail going in there. When it's finished at least at the moment it looks a little bit weird still. I'm hoping it looks very weird at the end. So there's those bits of shell going on there. Slightly out of shot which is lovely. I think I correct that in a minute. Any minute now. And I'm just showing it to you. You can see the shell. And there we go, I've zoomed out a little bit. And, oh, I've changed my trousers. It must be another day. This is where I'm putting on these shoulder pads. Again, green stuff. I'm sure about 50% of these videos is just going to be me mixing up green stuff in my hands. 
that's what you gotta do, I'm afraid. The price we pay to make sweet, sweet, delicious looking models. It takes a toll on our thumbs. Just remember to keep those fingertips moist, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just rolling it into two equal balls, so I can use one on each shoulder pad. And then gluing it inside. The green stuff is especially important on something like this, because I'm gluing an angled surface to a really smooth, rounded surface. There wouldn't be much of a connection point there. So with the green stuff, it just means that there's going to be a lot more contact between the two pieces. There's going to be less chance of them falling off. That's the theory, anyway. And then I'm just going around smoothing it down and taking off any excess glue. And that looks quite nice. I am going to smooth these into the model a bit later on when it's all dry, but I'm not going to mess around with that just yet. As you'll see, I'm just making sure they're completely even because I'm crazy like that. I would go nuts if one of them was slightly off. And here's an interesting bit. I'm about to put spikes on the... How shall I put this politely? The curved parts of the torso, let's say. Because I thought, why not? It seems a very slanishy thing to do. So, yet more green stuff mixing going on there. Then I'm going to glue it to the spikes. These are the same kind of spikes I used underneath the cannon, but these have not been cut down at all, because they don't need to be. And they're going on at a slight angle. You'll see how it looks in a minute. I think I may spend a long time adjusting these, but I'm not going to show you all that, because that took a very long time. But anyway, we're coming to the end of this episode now, so I shall give you some still shots, and I'll see you next time. Keep it spooky.